With the Tesla solar inverter mounted, the next step is to bring wiring into the unit and to make terminations. Wiring within the inverter can be split into two main types. DC wiring, which connects the inverter to the solar array with positive, negative, and grounding conductors is terminated here. And AC wiring, which backfeeds the generated power into the home's electrical system is terminated here. DC and AC wiring must be run in separate conduit, one to the solar array and one to the point of interconnection to the existing electrical system. Begin by terminating the conductors for the DC conduit into the solar inverter. Start by terminating the equipment grounding conductor in an open ground terminal. The remaining positive and negative conductors will be connected to these terminals labeled positive 1 through 4 and negative 1 through 4. To avoid the risk of electrical shock or damage to equipment, DC wiring must be terminated at the inverter first before connecting the other end to the solar modules. Additionally, the inverter must not be connected to AC power when making DC terminations. Strip the insulation from the end of each positive and negative conductor. For DC circuits with less than 13 amps, conductors will be landed on this top row of terminals. Insert a cabinet tip screwdriver into the rectangular actuation shaft to open the adjacent round terminal. Insert each conductor as far as possible into the terminal, then remove the screwdriver from the actuation shaft to close the terminal. Whenever the DC input current exceeds an MPPT rating of 13 amps, jumpers can be used to combine two sets of terminals, allowing the total DC input current of up to 26 amps. Jumpers are included in the solar inverter accessory bag and can also be field made with appropriately sized wire. Follow the same steps to terminate one jumper between positive one and positive two on this top row of terminals. Then install another jumper to connect negative one and negative two. Finally, terminate the positive and negative DC conductors on this lower row of terminals labeled positive two and negative two to complete the high amperage circuit. The same steps can be followed to install jumpers and high amperage DC circuits on terminals three and four. With all DC wiring terminated, perform a tug test to ensure all conductors and jumpers are fully seated in their terminals. Moving on to AC wiring, Tesla solar inverter includes two line conductors, one neutral conductor, and an equipment grounding conductor. Terminate the two line conductors on an appropriately sized breaker within the home's electrical system. Terminate neutral and ground on the respective bars. Ensure that this breaker is in the off position and is secured against reconnection during the remainder of the wiring procedure. Bring enough wiring into the inverter to comfortably reach these terminals with a service loop. Strip the conductor insulation as shown here to prepare it for termination. As before, Insert a small cabinet tip screwdriver into the rectangular actuation shaft to open the grounding terminal. Insert the grounding conductor as far as possible into the round terminal, then remove the screwdriver from the actuation shaft to close the terminal. Perform a light tug test to ensure that the conductor is fully seated within the terminal. Repeat these steps to terminate the remaining line and neutral conductors. In addition to the DC and AC wiring, the solar inverter can be wired to a low-voltage system shutdown switch that disables the inverter. When the system shutdown circuit is opened, the AC relay within the solar inverter is opened, disabling solar output. To install a system shutdown switch, locate and remove this factory-installed jumper between these two terminals. Install wiring to connect these two terminals to the contacts of a normally closed switch rated for at least 12 volts and 1 amp. The switch must be installed externally in a readily accessible location near the utility meter. Wiring within the Tesla solar inverter is now complete. The next steps include configuring energy metering and commissioning the inverter for use.